In times of uncertainty, we're all looking and wondering what exactly can we possibly be seeing in the future? So we're going to take a look ahead today with David Childers from Keeping Current Matters. He's going to share with us the forecast that he's seeing and what you can expect for your business in 2025. All right, David, this is, man, I'm just looking at this. This is like a fireside chat. We got a nice little go. fire. I know we should, we should turn the fire off here in August or September or whatever. Well, I guess it's September now. We can do that. It is. I guess so. I know. But look, this is a uh, conversation, I think, heading into the, you know, wrapping up the third quarter now and heading into the fourth quarter that is just makes a lot of sense. So I'd love for yeah. you to kind of give some insight on kind of where we are today. Um, right. And then we can set this up on maybe where some where we can see some things coming in the future as well. Yeah, no, I'd love to do that. And I think the timing is right for it, Jimmy. And, uh, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I've had a chance to talk to a lot of agents across the country. And I think that is the question, you know, where are we at right now and sort of what's around the corner? And, um, you know, in my opinion, when the Fed met um, uh, several weeks ago in Jackson Hole and they said it's time to shift policy, that was a big change for our business. And, and we've even seen a little bit of relief, relief obviously, in, in mortgage rates. We know the Fed's cut rates. But, but here's the analogy that I would give you. You know, two and a half, uh, well, almost two and a half years ago, when mortgage rates started to rise, it was the fastest rise in the 30-year fixed mortgage in recorded history. Mm -hmm. I think we have to understand that. And, you know, everybody listening to this is still around, hopefully, in the business. And it's, you know, it's brought a lot of things in. Affordability has been a massive challenge. And, you know, uh, sales have slowed down because of that. But if I gave you an analogy, it would be this. It would be, um, it'd be, you know, maybe getting a cold. And, and I don't know about you, but, you know, sometimes when you, when you get a cold, you think, I think the first day you're like, am I getting sick? Is this happening? And then you go, okay, I am sick. But then there's a day coming, hopefully not too far, you know, day or two down the road where you feel kind of the fever break or, you know what, I think I'm getting through this thing. And I'll tell you, I think in what the Fed's done and in, in, in their direct now, their direction now, the fever is broken uh, relative to the path that we were on with mortgage rates, and we're on a different trajectory now. And that's a that's a really good thing. That doesn't mean we're out of the woods. I'm not coming here saying, "Hey, everything's great." But what I am saying is there's a change. And, we, and you know, if you get sick, Jimmy, and the fever's broken, you're not well immediately. Right. But you know what? I'm getting well and I'm getting to that point. And I think that's right where we sit right now in uh, in in you know mortgage rates starting to come down. And I'll talk about what folks see in that. Um, but I think it was a, it was a very, very significant, you know, last 30 days in our business uh, for, for what what's going to set up going into next year. Yeah, David, I mean, we keep hearing about how the Fed is you know, their policy is really going to shape what happens into the future. Right. Um, and from that standpoint, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think this is one of those where as you're heading in a direction, you know, you have to have something that changes that direction. Right. And in this case, I mean, this is something we've been talking about for a while now is when does this happen? How does it happen? So let's talk a little bit about how that really kind of affects everything, if you don't mind, and what that looks like maybe going forward now that maybe we're here. And what does that look like as, as we prepare for some of yeah. the end of the year, first of next year? Yeah, I think that's the question right now. You know, I always want to bring you the slides and the facts about what's going on. And, and um, you know, I think the there are a couple of things that I would say about that. Um, there, there was a survey done. I'll show it to you here in just a minute by Reuters to say what are economists thinking. Uh, and then I can also show you what the forecast are. So let, let's maybe start with mortgage rates. I'll share my screen real quick, give you right. a, a little bit of perspective on that. This is the study I was telling you about. It's a study done by Reuters. Um, and they said, what, what do you, as an economist, what do you think the Fed is going to do this year, 2024? The overwhelming majority said they believe there will be two rate cuts. Now, if you're listening to this saying, hey, I think that's going to be three rate cuts, it very well could be. I think this is, is sort of a moving target. But here's the big point in this. We're not in a place right now where we're saying, are they going to? We're at a place where we're saying, how many times are they going to? OK, and that's significant. Now, I think there are a couple of things. So whether it's two, whether it's three here in 2024, most are looking out into 25 saying that number is going to be even greater. Could be three or four uh, rate cuts in 25. That bodes very well for our business. Why? Because it impacts one affordability. 
you know, it's, it's as, as rates start to come down, we get a little bit of relief. More people can afford a home. Right. You know, there was a, a study done by Bright MLS, you know, here on the East Coast that they said last year, 70 percent of buyers uh, abandoned their search because they couldn't afford it because rates were too high. So I, I think we're we're going to have a little bit of a, I don't know if I'm going to call it wind, uh, but maybe a breeze at our back. I don't think anybody's mm-hmm. going to get blown over by it. Right. But I think instead of heading into the wind, we're, we're going to have a little bit of a breeze at our back with with mortgage rates, you know, improving. Now, the question is how how quick and how fast will they improve? But here's what I will give you. And it's it's this look right here. Every one of the forecasters that we uh, follow at K- KCM has rates coming down over the next six to 12 months. So you, you can't have confidence in that and you can help guide somebody forward. And, and that ultimately is going to impact the number of homes we sell next year. That'll impact prices next year. But but I, I think we're, we're starting to see this path that's going to uh, you know, move us forward based on some of the action and some of the things that the Fed has said, and, and that will bode well going into 2025 for housing. Yeah. David, you mentioned this to me a while back when we were talking about the doldrums. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think that, that that is a very you know significant thing you said about, hey, we, we've got some breeze here. Do you want to kind of talk about what that is and kind of just that that that's a great example, I believe, on kind of where we are and what we're seeing, hopefully going forward right here as well. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, the the the, the analogy there is, is a sailing analogy. And the interesting thing about sailing is it's a lot like our business. So in, 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 and I'm not a sailor, but I've learned a little bit about this. You know, you, you, when you're sailing, you need wind to sail, right? right. And right. the interesting thing about sailing is you can sail with the wind or you can tack into the wind, right? No matter how, 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 with the direction of the wind, a skilled sailor can navigate the market. And that's the truth about uh, real estate. A skilled agent can navigate the market, whether the wind's in their face or the wind's at their back. Now, all of us, Jimmy, we've talked about this a lot over the last few years. When the wind's at your back, it's a little bit easier, right? It's, right. Yes. It becomes mm-hmm. harder. Yeah. It becomes harder uh, when the wind's in your face. Now here's what get, gets interesting. You can get in, and there's a uh, there's an area in, in the ocean uh, called the doldrums where there is no wind, and that is a challenge, right? If you're sailing and there's no wind, you got a problem. You got you you got to turn on the motor at that point, you know, and right. you you got to you got to be able to manufacture something to get moving. And you know, there are probably plenty of people watching this and know a lot more about it than I. Uh, do but I think we've been in a time in our business where we've sort of been in in the doldrums and I, I think there's there's sort of a light wind. It's a matter of how we harness it now and, and how we get going. And I think mortgage rates in in that will provide a little bit of that breeze to get us going from where we've been. Yeah, and David, I mean, looking at this chart is what made me when you mentioned that also is is it, it if you look at this chart, you can almost see where the headwinds were as yep. rates were yep. rising. You can almost see a little bit of drifting. Here, you know, since 2020, what was it, Q3, 2022, then that time frame when we started kind of just almost operating in a in a channel, so to speak, where it was like we had a little bit of breeze and then we had a little bit of in the face breeze and we had a little bit and, and we were just kind of in that place where there wasn't a lot there. Right. And what it's what it's if you're looking at what the trending and the forecast here, um, you're seeing uh, not a huge breeze, uh, you know, not a huge wind, but you're seeing a breeze at the back. Um, of our business, so to speak. So that 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 made a lot of sense when you were saying that. It just reminded me of that, and it just makes yeah. a lot of sense. This is mortgage rates. What else are you looking at to watch? So, okay, so if if we and I'm not one, Jimmy. You know this. I, I don't believe our business and our trajectory of what we do is based solely on rates. I, I think you have to right. get out there and you have to do things differently. And, and you, you know, you yeah. have done so much yeah. to to talk about that and be a voice for agents on what you need to be doing right now, but. If we take that path of improvement in the 30-year fixed mortgage rate, that means more people can afford a home. That means more people step into the market that maybe abandon their search. And oh, by the way, 2025 forecasters, every one of them that's forecasters say or that are forecasting say that we will sell more homes next year than we have this year. 
you know, we'll end up this year somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.6, 4.7 million homes sold in this country. And that's a combination of new homes, existing homes. And, and you see the average here, 5.4 million um, uh, homes sold next year. So incrementally better. Nobody calling for this market, you know, something to happen where we blow the doors off by any stretch of the imagination. But I think if you're listening to this and you're wondering what you should expect, you should expect the business to get incrementally better each month as we go through next year. And, and I really think the work that we do right now will pay off in that time, right? There are a lot of people kind of going, what do I do? And where's this thing going to go? And all the questions that are asked, somebody who has sort of the sight line around the corner can go, okay, I see where we're going. And I can then, you know, do the work and put the work in right now to take advantage of that uh, around the corner. Yeah. So th David, I think pretty timely too, because what I've always said is, is the fourth quarter of the year is really, in my opinion, for real estate agents is separation season. It is the time when a lot of people will drift to the end of the year. They will either have given up on the goals because they just don't think they can make it, or they've met their goals and they just say, well, it's been a good year and Thanksgiving and Christmas happened. Yeah. But when you've got information like this, like you just mentioned, uh, where you have a belief on where we're headed on the opportunities, as you mentioned, that that are out there, I think this is the time that agents can begin to do the work now and plant the seed, so to speak, to reap that harvest. You know, if we work on a 60, 90 day period in our business, the activities that people are doing as they listen to this, whenever that is, 60 to 90 days from now is when they're going to start seeing the results of those phone calls, of those conversations, of that effort. So we've got some good statistics here. We've got some good forecasts. We've got some encouraging forecasts. You know, I love the fact that you mentioned incrementally better every month, which yeah. does make a lot of sense because every month we get further and further away from rising rates, you know, and we get into more decline in rates as far as what the Fed funds is doing, which affects everything. So oh, uh, this is great. great. This is super encouraging. Yeah. Let, me, let me say one other thing about that. Uh, you know, I think the as as the business gets incrementally better and we and, and, and if we can look at it right now as an opportunity, I, I think there's not been a better time in a, in a long while, quite a while, because there's so many distractions right now. Right. There's the election distraction. There's the NAR settlement distraction. There's the what in the heck's going to happen in our business distraction. If you have those facts and the truth, you can then go, hey, I kind of got that. I, I'm I'm, I'm kind of looking ahead. You know what I mean? Right. I'm just right here. Right. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're looking at the sales forecast. We've looked at the mortgage forecast. Is there any anything else you're watching right now or anything that you're looking for as far as forecasting? Yeah. So I, th I think the question that now comes up is, OK, if, if that's going to happen with mortgage rates and kind of get the path of that, I get we're going to sell more homes. What does that mean for prices? Because some people are kind of right. looking at it. it you know, real estate right now, and no doubt two things are true in most markets. One, inventory is rising and velocity is falling, right? The number of homes that have been sold is, is, is falling. And so what does that mean for prices? Normally that doesn't bode well for prices. You know, it would mean a plateauing or even a softening in some market. And I, I do think that'll be true, but the national landscape, this is a look at 2025 price projections from everybody that we follow. And, and I'd, I'd say, Jimmy, there is nobody calling for, you know, it's going into next year and saying, hey, prices are going to, you know, fall on a national level, maybe two to three, 4% home price appreciation, which, oh, by the way, is very normal. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely, right? You know, we, we, we got to get away from the unhealthy price appreciation that we saw a couple of years ago. Um, and so I, I think this, I think all of this shapes up for a, a very healthy real estate market. I'm not saying there aren't going to be challenges. I'm not saying there aren't challenges right now. But as I look into 2025, I go, okay, this is the business that we're in. It's healthy. Let's be thankful for that. You know, we're going to sell more homes next year. Let's be thankful for that. Prices are going to, to stand up. Let's be thankful for that. You know, so I think there's a lot right now that if you have the right mindset in you know, sort of your focused ahead, it's it's a lot different than maybe truthfully, Jimmy, some of the stuff we're fed in the business right now, which can be negative, uh, truthfully. 
Right. Yeah. David, you know, I think about this a lot of times too. I think we're so shaped in our mentality as agents on what is the most recent thing we've dealt with. Right. If we could erase that memory right now and we were to say, hey, how do you feel about 2025? And you were to say, well, I'm expecting rates between five and a half, six and a half percent. I'm expecting 5.3 to 5.4 million dollars, million houses to sell. And I'm anticipating that we're going to have a pretty historically average growth rate of 2.6% based on all the forecast on the home prices. That is a market to get excited about. Oh, I mean, you know, the problem is, is we see these extremes, you know what I mean? And people operate in extremes. Um, but it's times like this in very typical markets. I mean, basically when I'm hearing this, what I'm hearing is, is that throughout my 30 year career, this is going to be a very typical year. Um, and in some cases, it's going to have some very encouraging things because of the rates anticipating to come down. So you want to speak Completely. to that at all? I, you know? I think so. There are a couple of things I would say about the words there. One, I, I would say this, if I were to break it down, you know, rates and, and uh, homes sold and prices, a few words I would use on the rates, I would say this, all of the experts that I follow forecast for rates to come down. Mm -hmm. First thing. Mm -hmm. Second thing. On, on home sales, if I'm communicating to somebody that's like, hey, what, what do you think about this market? I think we'll probably sell a little over 10% more homes next year than we did this year. You know, it will we'll grow in the number of homes that are sold and you can break it down for people. And then third, what do I see for prices? I see very healthy price appreciation because what we have in the, in the rearview mirror was unhealthy. Right. That's, that's really good. Very, very well for our market and for um and for just the, the the strength of real estate yeah this is uh this is very timely information um this is stuff that agents if, if i'm sitting here just let me kind of get in the mindset and i would love for your input on this and how at kcm you guys suggest this as well but if i'm an agent out there i'm taking these and i'm telling these stories myself i'm utilizing mm -hmm. the slides i'm utilizing all of the uh all of the data that you guys collect, all right. the projections to be able to give my own opinion on where the market is headed based on facts. And so from that yep. standpoint, any way you would encourage agents or what you would suggest they do with this as well? Yeah, I think that's, Jimmy, I think that's the job, right? It's, it's okay, I understand and I'm our, 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 I can articulate what's happening in the national real estate market. Then I want to talk about what's happening in our market, right? right. And so, Jimmy, yes. uh, down there where you're at in the beautiful land of 30A, you know, what do I think about prices here where I'm at? What do I think about sales here where I'm at? So I want to compare and contrast both of those things. You know, I was uh, a couple of weeks ago down in Miami and they have some, they have some issues with inventory is growing there. They've got some condo issues. Okay. What do you believe about the market? How are you confidently leading people forward? That's what it comes down to. You, you, you know that, and Absolutely. you know, working with a great agent that can go, Hey, we do have issues over here. We do have things that we're helping navigate, but here's how we're doing it. Yes. And listen, buyers are going to buy, sellers are going to sell. This market That's is right. going to be very healthy. There's going to be opportunities. Utilize the information that David and the entire team over at KCM are providing because it's the best in the business. Uh, David, if anybody is not familiar or would like to check some things out, what's the best way to find you guys? Easiest way is go to try, T -R -Y -K -C -M com, and you can start a free trial there. You can get access to everything that we do. And listen, we exist so that you as an agent can be the expert. That's why we do all the work we do. So go check it out. Best in the business, my friend. Thanks for everything, David, you do and the entire team does for the industry. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.